Good morning children. This video is the fourth part of the chapter Resources and Development which is the first chapter Geography class 10 and in this we are going to study about land resources and conservation of land. Now land resource is the first resource that we are going to study and this is the most important resource of India or of the world we can say because we live on land, we grow our food on land and we do all the various activities on land. So land is a resource of utmost importance as we use land for various purposes. Land is of finite magnitude which means that it is limited. It is finite, it is limited, we cannot increase it so we should use it with careful planning and not to waste any part of it. So therefore we have to analyze things. Now land under major relief features in India. There are three major relief features the plains, mountains and plateaus. Plains occupy 43 percent of the total geographical area of India. Agriculture is done in the plain area as it is very very fertile as well as industries also are found in large numbers. Mountains, they occupy 30% of the total geographical area and tourism flourishes over there as well as the mountains are responsible to allow perennial flow of rivers. Then the plateau region which occupies 27% of the total geographical area and the plateau region is extremely rich in mineral resources and they are also known as the storehouse of minerals. So rich reserves of minerals are found in the plateau region. Next topic is land utilization. The various uses land is put to. The first one is forests. A large area of land in any country should be under forest. Number two, land not available for cultivation, which is not under farming or agriculture. That includes A, barren land and wasteland, the desert land, the rocky land, where no use is done. The second is land put to non-agricultural uses. This land is useful. It has been put to use, but not agriculture. So such land is under settlements, industries and uh, roads etc. Then other uncultivated land. Under that comes permanent pastures and grazing land where the cattle graze and which are used for the keeping up of cattle. Then the second one is land under tree crops and groups. This is the fruit orchards. We have apple plantations. We have various other plantations. So this is land under tree crops and groups. Third one is culturable wasteland. This is the land which was once under cultivation but it has not been cultivated for a period of more than 5 years. So that goes under culturable wasteland. Fourth is fallow land. Now what is fallow land? Fallow land is in order to let land regain fertility, its fertility in the most natural way without the use of chemical fertilizers. The land is not cultivated for a period from one year to five years. So that land is known as fallow land. Under fallow land comes a current fallow that means which is not under cultivation during that particular agricultural year. And other than fallow other than current fallow means that land which has not been cultivated for a period less than 5 years. And then the fifth point is net sown area. That means the area, total area that is under cultivation during a geographical year. Next we come to is land use pattern. How the land is used and what pattern it follows. 
this land use that what particular use is given to a land or it is used for a particular purpose is determined by two factors physical factors and human factors under physical factors we have topography and climate if the land is level the the climate is suitable then we find that land is very suitable for agriculture human factors like population density and technological capabilities etc here if the technological capabilities uh, uh, capability is good the population density is also good then industries etc can be set up the important features of land use pattern there are several features regarding the use of land some are satisfactory and some are not at all satisfactory the first is land under permanent pasture has decreased this is not a very satisfactory feature because now we find that the pressure is being put on agricultural land for the keeping of cattle for the grazing of cattle then we have net sown area is quite large in india which includes at times the fallow land also and this is a more satisfactory feature because the population of india is quite large but here one thing we should uh, take note of is that in the entire country net sown area in different states is quite different like the percentage of net sown area in punjab and haryana is more than 80% whereas in states like arunachal pradesh and mizoram nagaland etc here the percent of net sown area is less than 10% and this is due to the relief and climatic conditions punjab and haryana are plain areas with fertile soil and arunachal pradesh mizoram nagaland they are mountainous hilly areas with dense forest next point is forest area is far lower than the desired 33% of geographical area in india we do not have 33% of our geographical area under forest so this is also not a satisfactory feature then a part of the land is wasteland desert areas rocky areas which are not used at all and the last point is there is also land put to other non agricultural uses which we have seen as settlements and industries and roads airports dams etc our next topic is land degradation when we use land for a long period of time without taking proper, proper care of it it becomes useless so we can define land degradation as continuous use of land over a long period of time without taking appropriate measures to conserve it renders the land useless and if we lose land due to land degradation then with our finite availability of land it becomes a very serious issue so let us see what are the causes of land degradation the first cause of land degradation is mining sites are abandoned where mining is done craters are created and after that they are just left like that which degrades land then second is deforestation due to mining for mining a lot of forests are cut which leads to degradation of land third point is overgrazing that also causes a lot of land degradation due to soil erosion over irrigation is the fourth point where there uh, in states like punjab and haryana where a lot of agriculture is done there we find that due to over irrigation the land becomes saline and alkaline leading to degradation then we have the fifth point mineral processing industries they give out fine dust which makes the land infertile the last point sixth point is industrial effluence which means that the toxic material from the industries are just discharged without any kind of treatment which renders the land useless therefore it is very important that we conserve land because we know it is finite and we it is a very very important 
resource. So the various ways by which we can conserve land are first of all afforestation, planting a lot of trees and forests again. Second is planting shelter belts of plants, rows of trees are planted in order to break the wind force to avoid soil erosion. Then control on overgrazing. Fourth is stabilization of sand dunes which is done in the desert areas to stop encro encroachment of sand in the fringing areas. Fifth point is proper management of wasteland. Sixth point is control of mining activities. There should be a limit and controlled mining activities. Seventh point is proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents and waste after treatment. Only after treatment, the waste and the effluents should be discharged, which will save our land from getting polluted. Our land is very precious and therefore we should do our utmost to conserve it so that the future generation also can have proper use of the land. Thank you.